Oh, I've never done that before. Well, now that we got the uh, exterior siding all completed, thankfully, last thing to do to get that exterior tightened up before we finish touching up our caulking and last bit of touch up paint is uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut our trim. I am gonna go ahead and pre-paint these with the trim color. I like to paint all four sides, top, bottom, sides, back and front. That way any moisture that gets behind these, top of these, bottom of these, is good. they're just gonna last a lot longer. Trim color is uh, in the same color palette as our body color. It's just uh, two shades lighter on the same paint sample chip. So wanted it to kind of be in the same family not just plain white. So there is a tinge of green to it. Hardest corner done. Before I got this trim in, I went ahead and uh, Got, I found this flashing, it's nice brown galvanized uh, steel flashing. Because this post extended past the cabin, as you saw in, when we did our foundation layout, we measured a little bit outside the box. This six by six pressure treated post is exposed. It's just gonna soak all the rainwater and moisture straight down into it. So I put a metal cap over the top of it and then this L flashing up under the siding onto the cabin to direct the water over and away from that so that that increases the longevity of that pressure treated six by six. I'll show you this other corner too, our problem corner. And so by putting these caps on here, I mean, it's kind of hokey looking, but anyway, it'll keep that post protected and from rotting as quick and soaking all the moisture straight down into it. So that flat edge is covered, this flat edge is covered. Just a little fix. Attempt number three. This is the hardest one because I got to do all the notching. That's going to do it, I think. I don't want that sitting on the metal. This is up off the metal so it doesn't sit on any water. Okay. Last corner, the entry corner off the deck. So I'm starting on caulking the front side now while Rick does painting of the trim for this window. So this is a very tedious process, kind of takes a while, but it's much needed for to protect it from water damage. Do I have to do this on the nails that are flush? Yeah, you gotta get a seal of caulk around the head edges so that no water goes into the nail edges in, in the hole.
hate this corner of her cabin. I hate it. I hate it. It's called licorice. It's a little bit more green than I was expecting, so let's see how this looks. Let me get these. I love this yet. It's more green. I was hoping it's more black. Don't judge my painting skills. <laughs> I don't have any. Just like coffee. I hate both of them. First round. Might need three coats on this baby. painting the last two boards pieces of trim for the far side window the other two are already painted knock these out real quick light breeze we've had some major hot hot days in august for here so this is nice fall is my favorite time of year we're not quite there yet but i do love fall My wife has never really cocked before. She didn't really know. You want to fill the nail holes to flush and then smooth your stuff out a little better. But um, we got a lot of caulk on and that's the, the good part. The good news, um, it's going to be very weather protected as much as we can. And, um, and then we're going to paint it. Again, everything's pre-painted. So we're going to touch up paint it. I had my nail gun set, my new nail gun, a little too high when I did the sidewall over here and I used my father-in-law's nail gun, it was too high. So I sunk a lot of these nails too deep, except for this front wall. I had figured it out by here at this point and had adjusted my uh, nail sink strength on that gun. And so I found the sweet spot. All right, squirrel. Howdy. Howdy, squirrel. Sarge over there. Hunting up the squirrels. Hunting them up. Did you tree the squirrel, Sarge? Get him. Get him, Sarge. Get him. Sarge, you just ran by, bud. Good job. You just flushed him. Well, thank goodness we're done with caulking. Now, Brittany just needs to do the touch up paint, and the outside's going to be done. Because the weather can change here in a heartbeat in September, I am focusing on tightening up things that could be a problem on the outside. 
With that being said, I have a pretty steep hill and trail that I beat down through the woods building this cabin, bringing materials in and coming in and out for erosion control to keep from washing out my pillars of my cabin and down where my deck low spot is, right below the deck where I put those landscaping stones. Today I'm gonna cut some four uh, foot long uh, chunks to make a box, a four foot box for my initial step up from those stones, kind of forest service style. Um, so I'm gonna get those cut and we're gonna get those in. Carpentry pencils are the uh, lifeblood of making your marks on your timber, your lumber. But I like to use a Sharpie on pressure treated because it's hard to see the pencil a lot of times, especially in the shade like this. All right, so we got three four footers here. I'm gonna get another one. So I have a fourth for my box for today. Take those to the cabin. So what I got here is two foot long, three eighths rebar. This is gonna be the stakes that hold my boards in place. Yeah, I know there's a lot of different things I could fill this with, better materials. I'm in the middle of the woods. I'm reusing the material from the site to backfill this, and then I'm gonna top it with gravel. So right here, I'll just put my next box, four foot by four foot, where you are, the camera's tripod is, up the hill, kind of canted uh, in our trail's direction. Sink that in, backfill it, and then fill these both with gravel. From there, I kind of have some smaller area there to work with so I can use just a normal two by six cut to three, four feet uh, on the downhill side, stake it in with rebar, backfill it, and do that two, three times up the trail and we're, we're set. Exciting day, insulation time. Getting going on the insulation finally. 